priests, the prophets. Uh, and I want to take a look at a scripture in Acts chapter 15 that show us that the words that were penned by the prophets uh, are indeed, the, not only are they the word of God, but the Bible tells us that they are in complete agreement. Acts chapter 15 verse 14. We'll read from verses 14 to 16. There we read. Simeon hath declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. And to this agree the words of the prophets, as it is written, After this I will return, and I will build again the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down. And I will build it again, the ruins thereof, and I will set, up, and I will set it up. See how the Bible emphasizes great agree or, or agreement between one part of the written word and another. In Acts 15.14, Simeon, um, which is actually Simon Peter, is said to have made a declaration uh, regarding the Gentiles, and this declaration agreed with what was written back in Amos chapter 9, verse 11. So when God places these kinds of statements in His Word, um, like the one found in Acts 15.15, 15, and to this agree the words of the prophets, we need to be able not to just read through it without actually noticing what he's trying to teach us. Um, this is this is what, um, or this would be a, another Bible study principle, if you would, um, that is applied not just here but throughout his entire word. That the words of the prophets must agree, or the Bible must agree, with anyone who makes any declaration concerning the Bible. Uh, that's what we call harmony. Let's take a look at Acts 17:11. In Acts 17.11 we read, These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind, and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. So, when God sent Paul, uh, Paul spoke through under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. Yet God doesn't condemn the Bereans for checking, or, or checking up on the things that Paul had said. Rather, he commends them for doing so. Okay? What they were doing was, they were looking for agreement. Um, now let's talk about the dangers of not having harmony. Let's turn of, to uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. This is a passage we're all familiar with. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, we read, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Let's also read verse 17. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Every word from the scriptures, every word in the scriptures comes from the mouth of God. Okay? Therefore, every part of his word is in perfect agreement. This is the foundation every doctrine is to be built upon. Um, but spiritual blindness uh, has prevented self-professed Christians uh, from having biblical agreement within their own doctrines. Okay, as a result, doctrines are developed uh, by them that are not in agreement with the entire Word of God. They are not in harmony. What they have done is they've developed their own witness based on their own imaginations inst instead of relying solely on the witness of the Word of God. Uh, such witnesses are what the Bible refers to as false witnesses. Let's take a look at Mark chapter 14. Mark 14.55. We'll read from uh, verse 55 to 59. There we read. And the chief priests and all the council sought for witness against Jesus to put him to death and found none. For many bear false witness against him, but their witness agreed not together." See how God defines what a false witness is? Um, verse 57, And there arose certain and bear false witness against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and within three days I will build another made without hands. But neither so that their witness agree together. If you notice here, those that wanted to put Christ to death attempted to do so 
based or, or yeah, based on the law of Deuteronomy 17, the law that we learned about earlier. The difference is that according to the passage that we just read, they were bearing false witness. Moreover, verse 56 tells us or teaches us that if your witness does not agree together, then it is a false witness. It is a lie. And that's the foundation for every false doctrine. Now what I'd like to look at is why are these men accusing Jesus? Uh, why the men that are accusing Jesus, why are they said to be false witnesses? Uh, why is the Bible calling them a false witness? Let's take a look at, let's read it again. Um, Mark 14:55. And the chief priests and all the council sought for witness against Jesus to put him to death, and found none. For many bear false witness against him, but their witness agreed not together. And there arose certain and bear false witness against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and within three days I will build another made without hands. But neither so did their witness agree together. Now I want to take a look at the other account. Uh, that's similar to this. It's in Matthew 26, 59. We'll read from verse 59 to 61. Matthew chapter 26. There we read. Now the chief priests and the elders and all the council sought false witness against Jesus to put him to death, but found none. Yeah, though many false witnesses came, yet they found none. At last, came two false witnesses and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and build it in three days. So the, wit the two witnesses made the statement that Jesus said he would destroy the temple of God and within three days he would rebuild another made without hands. But what did Jesus actually say? Well, let's turn to John chapter 2. John chapter 2 verse 13. We'll read down to verse 22. There we read in John chapter 2, verse 13. And the, and the Jews' Passover was at hand. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem and found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and chargers of, changers of money sitting. And when he had made a scourge of small cords, he drove them out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changers' money and overthrew the tables and said unto them that sold doves, Take these things hence. Make not my father's house an house of merchandise. And his disciples remembered that it was written, The zeal of thine house hath eaten me up. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, What sign showest thou unto us, seeing that thou doest all these things? Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple in building, and wilt thou rear it up in three days? But he spake of the temple of his body. When therefore he was risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said unto them, and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said. So this is the account the two witnesses were speaking of. Uh, but what did they do to identify themselves as false witnesses? They misquoted Christ's words because they lacked understanding. They didn't understand that Christ was speaking in parables. So here's what they reasoned. They reasoned within themselves that logically, if Christ just drove them from the temple and he makes reference to the temple, logic would follow that he must be speaking of the temple. Um, so, in other words, because they were carnally minded, there was no way for them to know, much less understand, that Christ was speaking parabolically uh, of the temple of his own body. Let's take a look at the scripture which is quoted in John 2.17, which, which the disciples remembered. That's found in Psalm 69. Psalm 69, verse 9, uh, um, down to 11 also teaches us uh, the nature by which Christ spake. Psalm 69, verse 9, we read, For the zeal of thine house hath eaten me up, and the reproaches of them that reproach thee are fallen upon me. When I wept and chastened my soul with fasting, that was to my reproach. I made sackcloth also my garment, and I became a proverb to them. That's a parable. 
So the two witnesses that sought to put Jesus to death by their witness according to the law as described, they're described as false witnesses because they changed the word of God to fit their own understanding. They heard what Christ said, but they didn't understand what he said. So they incorrectly accused him of making claims to destroying and rebuilding of the physical temple. Uh, this happened to Israel of old and it also happened to the churches of the world. The lack of spiritual understanding and discernment is what's, it's what has made the churches uh, to be like the two false witnesses uh, in that they speak lies because they speak that which is not in agreement with the Word of God. Let's turn to Proverbs chapter 14. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 25. There we read, A true witness delivereth souls, but a deceitful witness speaketh lies. So the contrast that God makes between a true witness and a false witness could not be further apart. Uh, that's why it's so important that when God's people speak regarding the Word of God that every effort is made to speak the truth. This we do by being obedient to God's command to study, to be diligent, uh, and to rightly divide the word of truth. Yet with all of this, we always have to keep in mind that we are still creatures of limited, not infinite understanding. Uh, we rely solely on God to provide us with truth and with understanding if we have not understood something correctly. Uh, and, be, and there are times when we haven't understood something correctly, and that's because God has not yet revealed unto us uh, the things in His Word. You know, this we learned um, when we were still teaching the doctrine of hell. This we learned uh, before we understood um, when atonement actually took place. And, you know, this we understood uh, when we were preaching about the nature of judgment. Uh, none of that had been revealed yet, so we still didn't completely understand it. Uh, and now, by God's grace, I believe we're beginning to understand more and more regarding these things. Um, so when the time came for, God, for us to know these things, then we were made subject to correction. And God's people accepted these corrections. Uh, the churches did not. Uh, you know, and, and we continue to accept these corrections by His grace. Uh, and it wasn't until God unsealed the Bible that our understand, and when our, that's when our understanding was open. Uh, and that's when we realized that the doctrines that we once held to be uh, in harmony with the Bible, we realized they in fact were not. Um, so again, it can't be overemphasized that harmony is how God's people understand truth. That's how we come to truth, and that's how we know that we have found truth, when everything in the Bible agrees. Uh, unfortunately, the church has never really understood that. Uh, I'll stop here, and uh, we'll close with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we word. We thank you for allowing us to come here together, Lord, uh, and to fellowship and to uh, spread your word, Father. We ask that um, those that are listening online and those that are here, that you might uh, be with us, Lord, and continue to be with us this day as we continue in your word, Father, uh, as we go home and, and continue to fellowship online and continue to open up your word and to try to understand your truths. We ask, Lord, that you be with us and guide us throughout this day. In Jesus' name we pray.